Hey guys, I know that the scenery has changed again. We're still in my room, but I'm still testing out the different angles. So let me know what you think about this one. Um, behind me, you'll see the lights um, are on. You can't really tell, because if, if I shoot it a little bit too high, then you won't see my face. It'll just be the top of my head. But it's actually in the shape of a heart around the frame. Uh, since you guys can't see, I might change it so then it'll be like a pattern going up and down through the frame. But uh, we'll see. I gotta experiment with that. If you remember, I actually guessed Italy last time, and I was right. Yeah. So I'm actually super excited about this one because a lot of you may not know, but a while back I really, really, really wanted to learn Italian because I thought it was a very beautiful language and I love their admiration of food. So the first one we have is the Emica lemon chips. So Italians use lemons in a lot of their things including desserts, liquors, drinks, uh, as well as main dishes. And somehow they've managed to incorporate lemons into potato chips. This I saw it and I was like, wow, what do lemon chips taste like? So this I believe is kind of more on the snack sized um, side of things. But it says lemon chips and then there's some Italian on it. And then there's little nutritional facts on the bottom. Kind of just smells like chips, but yeah, there's a there's a hint of a lemon in there, like a zest. So let's see. The chips themselves, when you look at them, they kind of look like um, you know Lay's. Have you ever had Lay's chips like that? Very thin. Um, they're a little more golden as well. Actually, they kind of taste like Lay's too. The texture and the taste of the potato, anyways. And the lemon gives it that nice little sweet zest. Not that sour. It's very subtle and light. A little refreshing, actually. It's not something I would like go out and get, but I would probably buy to try, like in this box. <laughs> um, this is more like a five out of ten. So this is the Grand Art Rosemary Tuscina Toscana. Did you know there are over 500 types of pastas alone? The Italians actually also have multiple types of cracker varieties. This type of Toscana is flaky, buttery, and pillow-like, baked with rosemary and utterly addictive. Alright, so let's see how addictive they are. Actually feels like there's quite a bit inside, but thanks for a nice uh, snack size. Rosemary smells nice. Very herbly. So yes, you can definitely tell this is like a crack, bread-like cracker. Uh, there are small little squares. You know, at first you eat it and it's like, mm, it smells a little better than it tasted. But then you get to the end and then that's when the rosemary really comes out, I find. Yeah, in the beginning it's just like the bread and then once I think the bread kind of melts with your saliva, if that makes any sense. And the rosemary really comes out and the taste of it. This is good, actually. This is actually better than the lemon chips. Um, so this one, I'd say, is a 6 out of 10. This is the Laurieri Orange Froletti Cookies. These cookies are from a family-owned company, and for the past 25 years, their family recipes have captured the hearts of not just Italians, but people all over the world. And this is a orange-flavored butter cookie. It's very faint, but it's there. This one I was excited for because I was like, ooh, orange cookies. But then I was shaking it and it feels very crumbly. So I think a lot of the cookies are kind of broken, <laughs> which is very sad. But let's open it up and see. Oh no, I ripped the bag. Ooh. Oh, wow, the smell of the cookies. These are the kind of cookies that I like. The butter cookies, like there's like the butter cookies that you get in those tin cans, which are like American, or are they British? I don't remember. But they're like butter cookies, and then there's these butter cookies. Ah, oh, I don't know how to taste them, but when you smell them, you know these are the good ones. It smells all day. Okay, they look like this. It's kind of cute. I don't really know how to explain it. It's rectangular and it's got little lines in them. I think they should have made them look more like oranges, so more like round little figures, but whatever. Mmm. Mmm. So good. They're right though. The orange is very subtle, but you can definitely taste it and it gives the cookies a whole nother layer of flavor. So this I'd say is an 8 out of 10. 
I would buy this if I found this in the supermarket. This is the cantuccini, also known as biscotti. Biscottis actually can last months without getting moldy. And that's why this cookie was created in the first place, to be a convenient snack for soldiers when food was scarce. At first I saw this and I thought it was cute, but I didn't know what it was. Because there's all this Italian on it and then there's a picture of a wine glass and coffee. So I thought maybe it was a coffee flavored cookie. And that got me excited, but then I figured it was just biscotti. Biscotti's okay. I don't really like biscotti too much. So I'm not a big coffee drinker and I like my tea plain. So it's, eh, it kind of counteracts everything I like. It smells like biscotti. No crazy flavor either. I think it's just regular biscotti. I do have two, so the other one maybe I will have it with wine. I have some wine in the fridge. Huh. I mean, it's good, but not my cup of tea. <laughs> okay, that was lame. <laughs> Oh, it's so hard. Mm. So I was comparing all the biscotti I've ever had. This one's pretty good. It's sweet and actually has some flavor. Um, like a mild almond taste. Mind you, there's some almonds in it, but I think they might have used some almond flour as well. Which is uh, what well, gives it that nice sweet taste. Or also it would be like just stale and no flavor. So oh, hard. Oh. Yeah, this biscotti is like any other uh, biscotti I've ever tasted. It's slightly better, but um, I'd say it's a 6 out of 10. This is the Cabrioni Wafers a la Nocciola. Because cocoa was so rare and expensive out of World War II, uh, Pietro Ferro made use of hazelnuts instead of chocolate to make a spread. And we know it as Nutella. So these are wafers, except the wafers are thin and you get more of the chocolate spread, which is what every kid dreams of. Hopefully these are true to what the description is saying. And they come in little squares, so there's four in this pack. Whoa, and true to their word, yes, there's mostly spread and you see the wafers are very very thin. It's a little hard to see because my camera won't really focus in on it. It keeps focusing on my face but <clears throat> that's how it is. Mmm, smells hazelnutty. Mmm. Yep. Very very good. Ow. I think these are the best ones so far out of the whole box. It's a good balance of wafer and chocolate spread. Even though the wafers are made thinner so that you taste more of the spread, the spread doesn't overpower the wafer, which is what makes it really good. And it's not like sickeningly sweet either. Maybe because it's hazelnut, but it's it's just the right amount. Like I feel like anybody can enjoy this. That's why this is 9 out of 10. I'm going to have another one. <laughs> Okay, the next one is going to be really hard to pronounce. <laughs> this is the Monardo Gianduiotto chocolates. Fresh hazelnuts are first ground until they become a thick paste. Cocoa and sugar are added to the paste to produce a one-of-a-kind chocolatey concoction. So this is the real thing. Apparently there are a lot of knockoffs. Um, if you've ever been to Lint, Lint actually has something like this too. So I wonder if they do it the traditional way? I believe so. But maybe this one that I have here is the one is the one from the company that started it all. Oh, fancy. That's why I love Universal Yams. They think of everything. But yeah, I've had the lint ones before and it's packaged the same way, it looks the same way. And I think the lint one even has some Italian word on the front too. I'll tell you if it tastes the same in three seconds. Hmm. I'm a little disappointed. The texture is the same, so right when you put it in your mouth, it melts right away. But the Lindt chocolate one tastes better. <laughs> Ugh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Italian people that are watching this. Actually, no. Hold on. Hold on. Yes, the Lindt one still does taste better. But there's something different about this one than not unlike the other one. The other one, the whole thing is like a smooth, silky chocolate, so right when you put it in your mouth, it melts right away. This one, you put it in your mouth, there's actually um, a bit of a layer of chocolate outside that's a little, just a little tiny bit thicker. So that one takes longer to melt, but the inside is like that silky, smooth texture. I thought the real thing would be better. So this chocolate is also a 6 out of 10, I find. But please don't hate me for saying that. I got a lot of hate in my Russian video because I didn't like any of the snacks. 
So next are the Monardo chocolate pralines. So there's seven all together, but Universal Yums included two in each box. So you'll either be getting coconut, which is the white wrapper, milk, which is the dark blue, milk and cereal, which is light blue. Ooh, I want that one. Berries, which is pink, hazelnut cream, red and silver, uh, hazelnut and cereal, red and gold. That one will be good too. And coffee, which is brown. I have the light blue one and the pink one. So I think the pink one is f the berry one. There's no pink or silver. And the blue... Oh! I got the light blue one! Light blue... Yes! Which is milk and cereal! Okay, I want to try this one. I was going to save the other one for later, but maybe I should eat both because they're two different flavors. Oh, I have an excuse to eat two chocolates. Okay, so... Pull it. It unwraps. Find the little foldy thing. These are pralines. So, it's a ball. Oh, it's squishy. So I can... Oh my god. Okay, I squeezed it and it came out. So, <laughs> the chocolate's at the top, and then you got the bottom piece, uh, which is, I guess, the cream that goes in it. I'm gonna try to bite it in half. You know what? I'll just put this in a while. Good chocolate. Mm. Okay. A little disappointing because it's very sweet and not enough cereal. It's really just chocolate and cream. Like, it's good. I find the chocolate for this one is better than the other one, but... It needs more cereal! <laughs> it needs more cereal! Alright, so now we're gonna try the berries one. But this one I'm gonna try to keep it in my mouth and suck on it. Fruity. The fruity berry flavor was really nice, but again, it's too sweet. I don't know what happened with this one, but they put too much sugar in this one. And as much cocoa, it's mostly, yeah. Anyways, um, this one, uh, five and a half out of six. Not really a 50%, but, but I could totally skip this one, so it's a five and a half. And the last one is the anise candy. So for those of you that don't know, anise is a spice that's been used for centuries, particularly in ancient Rome. But it was recommended by a philosopher um, to alleviate headaches, aid digestion, and even reduce flatulence. For those of you who don't know, it's a party. Anise candy, I, unlike my food, I eat the best for last, but when it comes to like these boxes, <laughs> I save the ones I don't look forward to last. So anise candy, it's a herb, and if you've ever had pho, they actually use um, star anise uh, in the, the broth to kind of give it flavor. And a lot of dishes that do have anise, they don't put a lot in it. So I'm not really looking forward to this candy because I don't know how much is in here. Um, I hate black licorice the most. Star anise is close up there. I'll eat it in my dishes, but by themselves not. See, I smell it. I do like anise more than black licorice, but that is there. Yeah, it tastes exactly like star anise. If you were to take a clove of dry star anise and put it in your mouth and suck on it, this is what it tastes like. I don't want to finish this. I'm gonna spit it out now. Okay, I have three of these, so they're all going to be given away. Okay, I don't want to be biased, because if it was based on what I like, I would give it a 4 out of 10. But it is a good candy. It's nice and simple, and the flavor is definitely there. If I'm talking about the actual candy, then it would be like a 6 or a 7. Maybe more like a 7 out of 10. But personally, I would give it a 4. That wraps up all the snacks. Um, I enjoyed a lot of them. Um, not but really the smaller ones, surprisingly. I actually enjoyed all the larger ones. So the orange cookies, um, the wafers, oh my god, the wafers. Oh, the wafers. And even the rosemary crackers. Um, but yes, let us read next month's clue. Here you can ride a camel in the desert, or you can float in the sea. You can pray in a church, mosque, or synagogue, whichever strikes your fancy. Oh, and how could we forget? You can also eat and eat and eat. Next month. Peanut puffs, hava, and a bread that's super sweet. I love the rhyming game. Um, alright, so the first thing I thought of when it said ride a camel in the desert, I thought of Egypt. But then it said you could float in the sea or synagogue. They mentioned synagogue, so I think next month's box would be Israel. Um, also, there's you can float in the sea. There's like a sea that's very high in salt. I forgot what it's called. Salt sea, so 
I don't know, but there's some body of water that where the salt is very high or pure or something, and then you float, and it's like by Israel. Red, r the Red Sea is that it? I don't know. But I'm thinking of Israel, so it has to be Israel. Hopefully, I'm right. But yes, until next time, bye.